If you enjoy anime, be sure to come on down for 31 days of anime over on Mystic Sage. Also follow our TikToks for daily Pokemon and anime content. Links for all those will be below. Hey everyone, welcome back to the House Strong series. In today's video, we're going to be covering how strong Gengar is in every game. Or should I say, how Strons is Gengar in every Pokemon game. Yeah, a little bit of a typo in that poll, my bad. The way this was decided was by having you all comment down in the comment section, taking the top three to a community poll for one big final vote. And the result was Gengar. So if you have a Pokemon you'd like to see covered in a future episode, comment it down below. And whatever top three win, we will take them to another community poll for one more battle. As always, be sure to comment down below how you think this week's Pokemon will do, and leave a like to show your support. If we can hit 2000 likes on this video, that would help this series out a lot. Anyways, with all that being said, let's just see how strong Gengar really is. Starting off in Generation 1, we have the ability to obtain a Ghastly in the Pokemon Tower once you've obtained the Sylph Scope. When we catch these Ghastly, we'll be trading to evolve them once we obtain Haunter, unless there's a specific strategy to avoid doing so, which I'll go over if that comes up. The issue with Gengar in this generation is that you're basically limited to Thunderbolt, Psychic, and then Mega Drain as your best special coverage options for this generation, which hurts greatly when taken on most bosses. Gengar has a horrible physical attack stat of base 65, which hurts greatly when Ghost and Poison are both physical, and you have extremely low base power damage output as well as for all your stab. This means most Pokemon in these games will give Gengar a difficult time with you even losing against Psychic Trainers like Sabrina. The only Gym Leader I'd use Gengar for would be Koga in this gen, which is only good if you obtain Psychic from Saffron City before battling him. For the Elite Four, you'll have a couple usable matchups for Gengar. Despite having two Psychic typings, Lorelei actually lacks any Psychic offensive option to damage Gengar with, which means you'll be able to Thunderbolt most of them to defeat her. Bruno and Agatha's team are both handled by a combination of Psychic and Mega Drain, which again, neither of their teams have coverage for Gengar, despite it being against Pokemon such as Onix and Gengar, that on paper would be difficult for you to beat. I wouldn't recommend Gengar for Lance or Blue, However, at least against Blue, you can hit a Thunderbolt against at least his Water type and Mega Drain against Rhydon. Overall, if you'll be using Gengar in these games, it's really only worth it for the Elite Four, but there are definitely stronger options. Next up to Johto, we have the ability to catch Ghastly in the very early portions in Sprout Tower, before even the first gym. Sadly though, Ghastly can't actually damage most of the gyms successfully in these games. Your type matchups on paper sound better in these games when you take on a normal and fighting type gym leader. However, leaders such as Whitney and Morty will prove to be a pain for you even though your type matches up well against them. If you buy Fire Punch and Thunder Punch in Goldenrod, you at least have good matchups against gym leaders such as Chuck, Jasmine, and if you get lucky with rolls, Price as well. While Gengar can't win on its own in any of the Elite Four battles, you'll be able to claim a few kills against all of them thanks to the elemental punches. The only struggle for you will be Karen, who has Umbreon and Houndoom that will hardwall you. Otherwise, the later portion of Johto has a lot of strong matchups for Gengar. As for the post-game, the elemental punches will save you yet again against leaders such as Misty, Brock, and Erica. As for your fourth move, you can lack a strong option for every match, but you can probably just find Psychic and Saffron, which is a strong option to damage against Janine. You'll have a tough time against Sabrina, whose Psychic types will offensively beat you, even if you taught it Shadow Ball, but otherwise, you can at least give it a good fight in all of the Kanto games thanks to your wider TM spread in this gen. Overall, Gengar is very viable in Generation 2 for both Johto and Kanto. Moving on to Ruby and Sapphire, Ghastly is fairly useless in these games as well. You can't naturally find Ghastly in these games, so you'll have to trade it over, which means you'll have it for the entire game. Your first strong battle will be against Brawly, whose team you should be able to take hits on pretty easily. Even if you play Emerald where Brawly has a Metatite, you should be able to wall out his entire team, since even the Metatite can't touch you due to a lack of Psychic moves. Your only other strong matchup will be against Winona, who you can use Thunderbolt against her entire team very freely, besides Altaria which actually uses Earthquake in this battle. Gengar is not worth even using against the Elite Four in these games, since they all have strong counterplay to Gengar. Your strongest matchup would be against Phoebe, who still has several Pokemon that would do more damage against you with her Shadow Balls. Overall, Gengar is extremely useless in these games, and I would not even consider training one up. 
Since nothing really changes in Fire Red and Leaf Green, we'll skip to the Sinnoh region. Gengar has a huge buff from here thanks to the physical special split, making its stab options finally usable, which should help its matchups significantly. Sadly though, the gym leaders will be very rough on you. Even against Maylene and Fantina, who you'd think your matchups would be good against, you'll end up losing 1v1 because Maylene's Pokemon have strong ways to damage you, while Fantina, you'll lack Shadow Ball until you're on the way to Celestic Town. Weirdly enough, your best matchup would probably be against Byron, since you'll have a Gengar with Shadow Ball by this portion of the game, and his team can't really damage you. The best way to damage you would come from Bronzor, who you should easily be able to one-shot. Your only other strong matchup in this game would be against Lucian in the Elite Four, who you can use Shadow Ball against everything besides Girafferig. But you don't even play against Girafferig if you're playing Platinum. Overall, despite the buffs had in this generation, it's probably the worst generation Gengar has currently had in all of our games so far. Due to the physical special split, Gengar actually gets significantly worse in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. You'll lose out on your coverage from the elemental punches, being viable stab options. So your usefulness is significantly worse in Johto for these games. You'll only have good matchups against Price, Will, Koga, and Bruno, which comes mostly from resistances and immunities. Levitate helps you muscle past Price, since Palo Swine can't use ground moves on you, and you'll have Shadow Ball by now. As for the Elite Four, the first three members, you'll be able to suffice by setting off a Shadow Ball on all of their Pokemon, due to your resistance to poison and your immunity to fighting. Your matchups in Kanto don't really change, except for the fact that, besides Alakazam, you can put up a greater fight against Sabrina. Overall though, Gengar just ends up being worse than in the original games due to your loss of the elemental punches being special attacks. Moving on to black and white, we see another generation where we'll need to trade Ghastly over, but finally one where we may get some use out of it. Unlike most of the prior entries, you'll actually get some early use out of Ghastly in Berg's gym. His only Pokemon that'll cause issues is Dwebble, thanks to Feint Attack, but otherwise, this should be a breeze with Nightshade. Otherwise, you won't really have a strong matchup against any other gym leaders, since leaders such as Clay and Skyla have Pokemon that Gengar outright can't beat at all. As for the Elite Four, you'll have strong matchups thanks to Shadow Ball against Chantel and Caitlyn, but you'll struggle to beat Marshall due to his team's bulk, and Grimsley due to being a Dark-type member. Overall, yet another set of games where Gengar just barely misses out on being viable due to bad TM distribution for specific battles. The sequels, however, you actually notice a key difference in one battle becoming beneficial for you, being Skyla. In the original games, Skyla was annoying mostly because of Unpheasant, which you had no way to damage well due to poor TM distribution. However, in the sequels, she now has a Skarmory instead of Unpheasant, which means you'll actually be able to just freely use Shadow Ball here. Otherwise, despite fighting a poison type leader now, you won't have any more strong matchups, since Roxy's Pokemon both have coverage for Ghastly. In Pokemon X and Y, you can find Haunter before Lavera City for your fight against Valerie. Luckily though, while you're in Lavera City, you can pick up the Gengar right from the woman with black hair in the top left of the city, allowing you to use Mega Gengar for future battles. In fact, with Venoshock, you will be able to go against Valerie very well. Your next useful gym battle will be against Olympia, who you'll be able to just do Shadow Ball freely against. Otherwise, you won't really have much use before the Elite Four besides against Trevor, whose team loses to Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, and Thunderbolt. Keep this move set in mind, as it's exactly what you'll be using as well when you take on the Elite Four in a moment. When taking on the Elite Four, Gengar lacks any truly strong matchup here type-wise. However, with the aforementioned moveset along with Dazzling Gleam, you'll be able to put up a strong fight against all of the Elite Four. Your matchups, thanks to Mega Gengar, are fairly decent, with your only real struggle being against Wickstrom's Aegislash. Seabold's team all faints to Thunderbolt, Malvis team should all go down to Shadow Ball plus Sludge Bomb, and barring Dragalge, Drazna shouldn't have much that'd want to take a hit from a Mega Gengar. Deantha's team has Gudra, which will be a bit annoying, but otherwise, you should have a pretty easy battle here as well. Overall, if nothing else, Gengar is useful for the entire Elite Four run in these games. Despite being such a late addition, I would recommend picking up Gengar in these games. 
Now we move on to Pokemon Sun and Moon. In these games, you'll get access to Ghastly before the first trial, with your first viable use out of it being against Mallow. The Totem Lorantis here will be level 24, so you might potentially have yourself a Gengar by this point by just leveling a teensy bit higher. Doing so will help significantly against this battle, since it'll allow for you to have far greater stats to assist you in taking on this boss. Thanks to your typing, none of the support Pokemon or Lorantis itself can actually damage you well. So despite your horrible move pull, this should be a breeze. From here, you'll lock any more strong battles until you battle Lusamine, whose team will struggle against Gengar. Her only Pokemon that will appreciate taking on Shadow Ball will be Beware, which by now you should have Psychic to handle. Because of Gengar losing Levitate this gen, your battle against Hapu won't actually be a free win, making the Lusamine fight your last strong matchup before the Elite Four. As for the Elite Four, if you teach Gengar the typical moveset we've gone with, being Shadow Ball, Sludge Bomb, and Thunderbolt, you'll be fairly set for most of the Elite Four members. Kahili's entire team will be destroyed by Thunderbolt, barring Mandibuzz, which is the only Pokemon that will prove difficult for Gengar, but otherwise, she should be fairly easy. Acerola's team should all go down the Shadow Ball besides maybe Sableye. However, even if it doesn't, it's a Sableye, so you should be fine here. Paula and Olivia's teams will prove too bulky to handle, but you can probably at least get a KO or two against them. Sadly, you won't really match up well against Kukui. However, you'll have the easiest time against him if you chose Lytton as your starter, due to him having a pre-marina, which at the very least should be easy for Gengar to beat. Overall, Gengar is an okay option in this game, but I wouldn't sweat it if you can't find one. As for Ultra Sun and Moon, you don't really have much of a difference in battles. However, at the very least, Gengar will also be useful against Mina and Mallow. Otherwise, Gengar's battles in these games stay relatively the same for Gengar in the main story, with your champion battle against Tao now being the easiest if you chose Rala in these games. Overall, it's not a huge deal if you don't get a Gengar, but it's helpful for a few battles. Your matches on Let's Go remain relatively the same. However, you'll have a few key differences, due to the physical special split that was not present in Fire Red and Leaf Green. For starters, you'll have an actual way of the damage Sabrina, which should help against all of her Pokemon besides Alakazam. You'll also have a very easy time against the Elite Four this time around, thanks to the combination of Shadow Ball, Psychic, and Thunderbolt. There's only a few Pokemon, such as Lance's Dragonite, you'll actually struggle with. Thanks to key differences like these, however, it makes Gengar actually a decent option in these games, as long as you're careful of faster Pokemon. Finally, let's break down the behemoth known as Sword and Shield. Ghastly can be found in the wild area by North Lake Malok, at level 14 through 16, which is the earliest encounter for this you'll get. This means you'll sadly miss out on it against Milo, but that's not too big of a deal, as you'll match up against a decent amount of the rest of Galar with the help of TR moves. Yes, they are a bit more of a pain to obtain compared to TMs or simply leveling up, but with the different Watt traders and all the max raid battles you can participate in, it really isn't as bad as you might think. Of course, there's access to moves like Sludge Bomb and Shadow Ball, but the coverage is where it's at. Focus Blast, Thunderbolt, Energy Ball, Dark Pulse, Psychic, and even Dazzling Gleam makes an appearance. Most of those can even be learned while it's a Haunter, so it truly does shape up to be a great Pokemon to use in this region. Honestly, you'll be able to take on most gym leaders throughout the game, most notably Nessa, B, and Opal. Sure, you have to watch out for a few counter moves here and there, but that just comes with the territory. The Champion Cup should also not be too much of a problem, although Gengar probably won't have a great time around Marnie or Alistair. Leon, of course, has constant threats like Aegislash, Dragapult, and Haxorus, but his three other Pokemon shouldn't be too much to deal with, though Leon isn't the champion for no reason. All of them have coverage for a Pokemon like Gengar, but I'll be honest here, it's Gengar. As long as you play your cards right, Gengar will take you a long way. After going over every game, I have concluded that Gengar is not worth using on your journey. Gengar is extremely reliant on TMs to be useful, and unlike Nidoking, which we covered previously, the TMs you get that Gengar will need are extremely inconvenient for the bosses you'd use them against. Also, Gengar, learning no poison moves on level up, hurts immensely against key matchups, especially against fairy trainers in later games. Overall, while Gengar has games such as X and Y in Sword and Shield it is very useful in, as a whole, it is not very strong in the in-game journey. Well, that's going to do it for how strong Gengar is in every game. Gengar proves to be more of a hassle than anything on your journey. 
But what do you think? Be sure to comment down below what you thought and what Pokemon you all want to see next. I'll be selecting the three Pokemon with the most likes and putting them head to head in a poll for the next choice. So if you want to see your favorite Pokemon analyzed, make sure you're liking or commenting. Hey, welcome to my new outro. A big thank you to everyone for watching the video. I want to give a huge thanks to my phenomenal team and for the amazing art done each week by Danny the Demon. I couldn't do all this without them. If y'all enjoyed the video and want to see more content like this, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. Be sure to leave a comment too, it really helps us out. I have a brand new TikTok for Mystic Umbreon, and I've got a goal to get the 10k followers over there. If we can hit that goal, I'm going to pick a random video suggested to me by you guys and do it. So go over there and leave a follow. Also over on Mystic Sage in the month of July, I'll be uploading one video a day. We've got content from My Hero to Demon Slayer to Black Clover. So come over to check it out, and also check out Mystic Sage on TikTok. Finally, I've got an Amazon store where we sell tons of Pokemon and anime products. I think I'm going to wrap this up though. I'm Mystic Umbreon, and I'll see you next time with some more amazing Pokemon content.